earning $2 an hour on the farm. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. Let's look at this article from Yahoo Finance because this is very, very political reporting. So cannot turn away from it. Albanese blasts the PM over $2 farm pay. Now, this is a problem. There's a big problem in Australia. And it frankly comes down to the fact that people seem to think that their time is worth something. Your time is not worth a thing. You just turning up there and standing on your ass is not worth anything. Welfare has now created this perverse situation where people can get paid to essentially do nothing. With regards to this $2 farm pay, and I'll zoom out so you can see it, it's to do with a piece rate or a pick rate. You get paid for what you produce. Your time is worthless. It's worth nothing. People will often lie to you in business to try and get you to buy things, saying, oh, look at all this time you save, and your time is money. Your time is only worth what you can produce, what value you can add, what you can create. That is what you're worth. If you can create something worth significant money in a short amount of time, then you're worth a lot more. Maybe you don't have the skills. Maybe you can't work that hard. Your time isn't worth as much. It comes down to what value you add. That seems to have been lost. I guess I just have a different perspective as a small business person. My time, I've got no guaranteed hourly pay, no guaranteed rate of what I'll get. I will get paid for the work I put in. With regard to fruit picking, I've had friends who've done it, who've made good money. I honestly think it's a young man's game. I think the younger and fitter you are, you can make some decent coin. I think the conditions, well, have a lot to be desired, depending on where you go, but still, there are opportunities there. And maybe, maybe you need to go through working picking fruit, which is a low-skilled job, to be honest, to realize that maybe you don't want to be doing that into your old age, Maybe you want to sort your life out a bit, get financial security, and improve your skills. Or has that been lost now? Because look at this rubbish, how they're writing this. Many farm workers earn less than $2 an hour due to chronic wage theft and underpayment structures, and the government must address it, Labour leader Anthony Albanese said on Friday. I mean, this wage theft is the same thing. If you're not producing... This is the thing. In this situation, you have to produce. You have to work. You have to actually get something of value. And sure, I mean, it's not the perfect situation, guys, but it's a fruit picking job. It's low skilled. If you don't want to be dependent on that, you've got to find some other skills. And the people in the comments going, oh, there's no opportunity in Australia. There's, you know, it's all just such a doomer, pathetic mentality. You've got to work, guys. Sure, the boomers had some perks. They did. But we have them now a days as well. Okay? A major report from Unions New South Wales. Well, there you go. Right there. Completely um, political organization. Found that 88% of ads for farm and fruit picking workers offers wa offered wages based on piece rate. With 96% of these piece rates not allowing a worker to earn the minimum wage. It depends. If you can pick enough, fast enough, then you can earn the minimum wage. I know people have earned more than the minimum wage. But here's another question. Do we need a minimum wage? What? Who set the minimum wage? A bunch of bureaucrats and politicians for political purposes. What if you're not worth the minimum wage? What if you can't produce to be the minimum wage? What if you would like to actually have the opportunity to negotiate to work less for it because you would rather work than not? Because of the respect that you draw from that. We already have mechanisms in place where people who have a disability and are paid uh, able to be paid less than the minimum wage. Do we need to extend that to other people? Because remember, this is an artificial flaw. It's artificial in the market. A market minimum a minimum wage is set by the market with supply and demand. What we have now is we've got this artificial minimum wage. So it means it's understandable that people won't work for less than it because, well, there are other opportunities where they can. We also have a welfare state, a welfare system where you're paid simply to jump through the hoops, which is probably more painful than working in some regards. But you're, you're trapped in that. You couldn't, even if you were, if you were doing 
all that BS that they jump you through dealing with all those uh, those those rubbish bureaucrats and you wanted to get out of it and you said you know what I will happily take 50 bucks less than minimum wage to get me some skills so I can work then deal with these assholes again you can't do it guys because they to say no they've taken away that right from you Additionally, 65% of those ads for strawberry picking would mean most workers would earn less than $2 an hour, and there'll be some that earn more. It's the Pareto principle, everyone. You cannot turn away from it, Labour leader Anthony Albanese says. Now, they haven't, they haven't actually, they've just claimed two bucks. They haven't told us in the article why it's only $2. And I bet you they're basing it on average pick rates or, or people that probably are just not suited to the work. How often have you hired someone and you can either pay them per per item of productive outcome or per hour. It kind of changes their productivity there, everyone. Certain jobs shouldn't be hourly rate. Certain jobs should be with the outcome. And, and you've got to understand, my perspective is of a small business person doing projects. Very rarely do I do hourly rate work. You know, if I do, I'll say, you know, this much per hour, capped at this many hours to kind of limit the cost. But most of the time it's project based and often i will be working i've worked for below minimum wage i don't care sometimes you have to do it maybe a project went wrong maybe a client made changes sometimes you can work for above minimum wage much greater above it that's the challenge of running a business so i think this is very deceptive in how it's put forward people are just going to see it and get outraged outraged oh two dollars an hour how dare they these evil farmers taking advantage of it i mean you know it's, it's all the vegans and vegetarians that are eating all this stuff so carnival pride guys there you go you know we're not taking advantage of the migrant workers we need to do much much better and we need to address this now unions new south wales analysis of 1000 job ads they're just looking at job ads also named Bundaberg, Kabulcha, Biowa, and Banksy Grove are some of the worst regions for underpayment. This is just based on analyzing job ads. It's not based on the actual tax returns from these people. We need It needs addressing. We do need to address the need to make sure that our agricultural produce is able to be picked, that our farmers are allowed to operate Albanese Stead. So I'm sure they're going to propose more intervention, more government stepping in. What they need to do is if you can't, you know, if you're getting shit pay in these areas doing this work, maybe they need to really create special economic regions where none of the earnings that you gather from working on these farms are taxed. Why don't we do that? So we need to do it in a way that we can be proud of the product we produce because there are many farmers out there overwhelmingly who are doing the right thing if you're allowing exploitation to occur you're putting them on a competitive disadvantage by doing the right thing well this happens all the time everyone so they're looking for more intervention because they know better than you a growing problem fruit and vegetable prices in australia could jump as much as 29 percent this year due to reduced labor supply as COVID-19 border restrictions stop backpackers from heading to Australia. See, this is the problem. Our food supply is dependent on backpackers, on foreign workers that are willing to put up with the conditions, that are willing to work for these rates because it gives an extra time. International students I went to uni with, they, they would go out there on the holidays and pick fruit to earn money. And they'd be happy to do it. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has suggested Australia's on job seeker head to the regions to take up fruit picking work. If there is a job available, you are able to do that job, then it is reasonable for taxpayers to expect that you will take it rather than continue to receive benefits. And if you don't, then payment should be withdrawn, he said last week. Yeah, but that's never going to happen for fruit picking because they can always claim on job seeker that, oh, it's too far away. It's unreasonable to expect me to travel that far. I think there are people that will, that would, but we travel for work like that, but they're too established. We don't have that whole culture now of moving around, traveling for work here in Australia. When you can, you know, sit on the beach, 
Do your Centrelink forms, apply for your jobs online, and she'll be right, mate. However, the Australian Unemployed... I like this one, the Unemployed Workers Union. Noted that 10,500 Australians have taken up work on farms in the six months to February, while 3,500 were rejected for work. Well, it happens, guys. You, not everyone's going to get a job. See, there you go. 10,500 did. Fantastic. The AUWU, do you have to pay to be part of that union? Are they taking money... From the unemployed? I hope not. The AUWU said that if farmers are having difficulty finding staff, the government should investigate the working conditions on the farms. So wage theft in the spotlight. The union's NSW research comes as the government ditches the majority of its planned workplace reforms, including higher penalties for wage theft. I mean, you've got to understand, all of this... All of this. Have you ever, if you're if you're getting, you know, one of these outraged people, they get all, you know, in a flutter about this. You've probably never employed someone before, never run a business before, never had to deal with all the red tape BS that you have to every time you employ someone. How many businesses out there could potentially be accidentally miss, you know, not paying someone correctly? If the big businesses can screw it up, how many small mum and dad businesses do you think are? That creates. A disincentive to hire people, everyone. That's another risk. Why bother dealing with, you know, hiring an Australian when you can offshore it for a lot of businesses? And here with the fruit picking, there's only going to be so long till you get companies that will just contract and have a fleet of drones that will come out and do it. Just, just wait. It'll happen. 100% people are working on it. Farmers would work on it. You know, you could pay the same money as a, a fleet of people, an army of people, and just go over it with machines. And then have five people check. Can you imagine? Just wait for the outrage for that. So the government that turfed the package after it became clear it was unlikely to gather the support of the crossbench. The bill included changes to enterprise bargaining and award simplification, but have been heavily criticized by Labour and the union mo movement. Well, of course they're going to criticize it. The union movement want to keep the benefits for their members. They want to encourage people to join their cartels. They want to have control of the labor market. They don't run businesses, everyone. It's run like a business, but they don't run businesses. They want to get all the benefits of running a business while milking their members. However, the bill's provisions to criminalize wage theft was met with bipartisan support. Okay. So there you go. You make an accident, you probably assumed guilty until you, you know, at least in the media you would be, they'd tear you to pieces. So what's going to happen? People are going to avoid hiring Australians. Stuff will get automated. It'll happen, just wait and see. We saw the government engaging in petulant and active vindictiveness because it couldn't get its wage cuts through the Senate, Albanese said. They got rid of the provisions that were so supported by every senator and every member of the House of Representatives about wage theft. Well, see, that worries me, that so many people are willing to push that through. More regulation, more red tape, more government BS. That, that's not what you need for a productive economy coming out of the first recession in nearly 30 years. An extraordinary act from an immature government that is in, oh, in chaos. I mean, he's... He's using words for sound bites. This is a manipulation tactic. We've seen it with the elections in America. At least, you know, Australia. They're learning. They're starting to learn. The only part of the bill that remains is increased rights for workers to push for permanency. However, employers can also now classify workers as casual, even if they work, if their hours are permanent and predictable. Yes, that should be how it is. People, some people want casual. Some people want to push for permanency. And that means it, it's, it's a fantasy. How long is it permanent? What, you get two weeks notice, maybe a month's notice? And that means that all of your holiday pay and these extra benefits, rather than you getting paid in increased cash so you can put it aside, that they now hold, it's in the hands of the business. So they've, there's a risk that, that business can fold and you can lose all those entitlements. There are many in the Senate and the Labour Party in particular who don't share my passion for creating jobs, Morrison said on Thursday. Yeah, no, well, in some ways Morrison is right. Government needs to get out of the way to create jobs. All of this 
intervention in the market is going to destroy jobs. It's going to disincentivize people from jobs. Mark my words, in the next 10 to 15 years, we'll start seeing drones rolled out that can do a lot of this fruit picking. I bet you there'd be people working on it now. I know a, a former mayor, sorry, a former premier, Newman, he's involved in a company that is looking at just similar things to that, deploying drones to farming equipment. I'm a practical person too. That means if the Senate is saying they don't wish to support those measures, then we have to consider that in terms of how we go forward because I will send them other things to approve. So there we have it, everyone. Outrage from Albanese, a potential $2 farm pay designed to manipulate you. These articles are designed... Come on, Lucy, what are you doing? No mention of how the report was actually done. We'll look at that in another video. But it's pick rate, guys. If you suck, you don't get paid much. It's called life. You know what it is. This is, this is showing you how a lot of people are outraged because... You need to be good. You need to get good. What do you reckon? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Are you a fan of this? Or should the government get more involved? More involved. As always, if you enjoy my content, there are a few ways you can support us. You can watch the channel and share the videos. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.